Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining us, as usual, is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Doing good. Hope you are also. I am, although I have to tell you that now that I'm in my 60s, my knees just are not the same as they were in my 20s. And I'm just thinking, you know, surely there must be something that we can do for those of us whose joints aren't quite uh, working the way that they used to work. Scott, I so wish that I had you closer to me because you're far away in a country to which shipping is a pain in the neck. Oh, Colombia. I'm in Medellin, Colombia right now. Indeed. And if you are closer, I'd uh, send you some of this wonderful product. New product being introduced onto the market. It is the double concentrated G5 organosilica with the sublabel collagen booster. In our joints, we're, we've basically worn away the collagen. The cartilage, which is the buffering tissue between the bones, is thinning out because it's losing its viscosity. It needs to be restored, rebuilt. And so, uh, it, is this is this kind of like? Um, I was I was actually th when you were talking, I was actually thinking of um, a sink and the tap. And of course, when you sometimes when you turn the tap, the, the well, most of the time when you turn the tap off, the water stops. But sometimes it leaks and it drips and drips. And if you take it apart, you find that there's this rubber ring that is basically worn away. And that's what basically causes the water to act like a seal to actually stop the water. So what we're saying is, is like the rubber ring needs to be replaced. Right. Because in your tap, you have gotten to metal on metal and metal on metal is not a nice fit. You need this buffering piece of rubber that's going to actually fill all the gaps and, and seal the, the leaking spaces. So in the shoulder or in the, in the knee or in the hip, we've got, we've got this rubber ring that's basically worn out. And what medical, your medical practitioner will probably tell you is you need a new hip or a new knee, and we're gonna have a surgery, we're gonna stick a whole new thing in there, when really all you need is some way to build back up that rubber ring. Right. They call it bone on bone. You have the two pieces of the bone meeting instead of being buffered, right? Like if I reach out here, I have this buffering tiny little thing of, I mean, this is a cork, but you can see the idea is yes. that when there is something in between, it's going to work better. So if I have something thicker that's got even some padding, I'm going to do even better. There's cushioning. When you, when you put weight on it, it doesn't actually hit. And that's the main point. Now, um, the, the physiological issues there, hyaluronic acid is the uh, material that uh, causes these joints or these materials in the joint to swell. And silica, is the mineral that helps us build new collagen. And this collagen is actually the uh, tissue that holds everything together. Collagen is the structural element of the human body. Like if you think of connective tissue, let's just say my liver. My liver is a matrix of collagen upon which liver tissues are strung and hung. Whereas, say, my skin is, again, collagenous structure with some extra epithelial tissues added to it. So even my bone, even the bone in my leg is a connective tissue structure that's soft and pliable upon which the mineralization is anchored. In fact, that's what we could show an experiment. If we took a bone, like a, say, chicken thigh bone, 
if we put it into vinegar, it will dissolve all of the calcium away. But what's left is this pliable, flexible, rubbery thing that's in the shape of the bone, just soft ah. and flexible. And that is the collagen, and that is what the silica is building. So you had mentioned G5. What is G5? G5 is a name. I guess I think it's Generation 5, added, added or named by Lloyd Claribeau, a French inventor who actually came up with this organic silica. And it's monomethyl silantriol. Now, monomethyl means that there's one methyl, CH3. Silane, that means that there's a silica at the center of it. And triol means that there are three OH, or hydroxyl groups, attached to it. Meaning the following. Silica, actually, is SiO2, beach sand, quartz. That is totally unusable by human body. We don't know what to do with it. It just passes through us as a filler. But once it is methylated, once it is attached to something that's organic, such as the methyl and the alcohol, the OH, hydroxyls, all of a sudden it becomes absorbable. So this clever man has turned beach sand, an inorganic, unusable material that only plants can turn into something useful, into an organic compound that is absorbable in the human body and structurally usable. So what you're basically saying with the silica is every part of our body uses it, and as we age, we're not getting enough of it to replace what we're wearing out. Yes, well, silica. Collagen is involved in hair, nails, skin. That's the most visible bits. So if you have abundant hair, you probably have abundant Collagen. If your nails are hard and uh, yet pliable, not brittle, you probably have the right amount of mineralization in your body. If you're suffering with inflammation in the joints, you probably have issues of deficiencies. And silica is a, is a major part of the deficiency. Yes. And here's the tragic part. The RDA recommended daily allowance standards that have been established by the FDA do not include silica. They didn't even bother measuring whether there is or isn't a need for silicon in the human body. Silicon, the element, we need about 40 milligrams of it a day, or we lose, I should say, about 40 milligrams of it a day, and we need to replenish it. And we do replenish it. It's in all kinds of uh, plants like it's richly present in horse horse tail and oat straw well actually all structural elements of plants we just don't get enough of it well i'm i'm thinking as you mentioned those two i don't eat those i don't think i've ever eaten those two plants so if i'm having lettuce is it in the lettuce if i'm having a carrot is it in the carrot a potato corn? it is there it is there but there's not enough of it if there was enough of it, you would be experiencing none of the wearing out of the physical structure, such as you are reporting that, that your knees aren't like they used to be, or right. your hair isn't as thick and wavy as it once was. Or. So basically what you're saying is, is I can be eating lots of organic fruits and vegetables, but those organic fruits and vegetables aren't necessarily supplying me with as much silica as I would need. Correct it is hard to keep up with it. So if we are showing these signs of aging, these wearing out of body parts, this stiffening and uh, pains, we would probably do better. Let's quote some stories. Like there are stories from athletes, there are stories from uh, ordinary people that have used this product. Let's put up a link to the Lloyd Clary Ball page that we have on Life Enthusiast website and add to it the following comment. There's this guy, he's uh, an aging athlete, he's a developed tendonitis. His Achilles tendon is hurting like mad. He's having pain walking, running, accelerating, just terrible. He gets the G5, he soaks a tissue, piece of ordinary tissue in it, and wraps it around his ankles. 
goes to sleep, does it three times, goes running, and runs without pain. And after, I think, six weeks of these treatments, runs better now than he did five years ago. Or an old soldier gets his hands on this, drinks it, and uh, his back problems that were just chronic pain for which he was on opioids and just suffering greatly, pain, couldn't sleep, would wake up three times, four times a night because he's uh, got positional intolerance, has to move, drinks this for a few days and sleeps like a baby. So how much should someone take? So the bottle of uh, the collagen booster is a one liter bottle or 34 ounces. And in it, there's enough for a one month supply of intense program or two month supply of maintenance. So it would be like a tablespoon in the morning and a tablespoon at night? Sounds about right. Or just a one tablespoon if you're going to take it slowly. So if you took a little bit too much, what would, would you experience anything? This thing is totally innocent. We'll do nothing dangerous. The only thing we'll notice is that you will have more flexibility, resilience. Your, gray, your hair will start growing faster. So I guess that'll be annoying because you'll have to go see your barber more often. Well, when you're at my stage with my hair, uh, if it's growing faster and there's more of it, I'm happy. So. Well, as soon as you're back, we're going to get you a couple of bottles and we can <laughs> test it on you. Awesome. I'll let everybody know uh, what the results are. I'd like to point out some interesting theories that have not made it into the mainstream. These are the theories around biodynamic transmutations put together by Louis Carbron, another French scientist. He has actually very carefully worked out the equations. And you and I have had a interview with Ken Campbell a while back where we were discussing these different biodynamic transmutation equations. But the basics of it are that you can take one or two, two elements, such as a combination of two carbons, and turn them into a, something else like silica, silicon. Or you can, for example, take calcium plus oxygen, it will make silicon. Magnesium plus oxygen will make calcium. Like there are these transmutations that happen inside of a living creature that the scientists say are impossible. They can only be done in a plasma reactor complicated way. These, these are called protonization, where we change the number of protons in an atom. And it changes the element from one to the other. And normally you need this big atomic thing blasting huge energy in order to do it. Right. And in 1799, the French chemist, Vaculin, became intrigued by the quantity of lime that hens excrete every day. So he isolated a hen, fed it a pound of oats, which were analyzed for lime. He then analyzed the eggs and the feces and found five times more CA, which was part of the CAO, which was the lime, excreted than what, than what was consumed. He concluded that lime had been created, but could not figure out how. That's right. This chicken that, that he was studying was excreting more calcium than it was ingesting. Hence, what's going on? So in 1831, Chobard germinated watercress seeds in clean glass vessels. He showed that the sprouts contained minerals that were not previously in existence in the seeds. So where did the minerals come from? Exactly. Again, protonization, nature in action. Like you cannot invent something out of nothing, and yet there it is. The direct evidence is there. And the funny thing is that the Western science, as we know it, is willfully ignoring these discoveries. Like this information is right there, in the books, on the record, and we're pretending as if that never happened. So this is not new, by the way. I'm talking about science that is from like the 1700s. Yeah. So in 1844, 
Vogel also found evidence of biological transmutation. He sprouted crest, seeds of crest in crushed glass, deprived of sulfur or any other sulfurous compound. He watered them with distilled water, covered them with a glass cover, analyzed the air in the room so as to determine the sulfur. A few months later, the adult plants with ripe seeds were dried and burnt with a mixture of potassium nitrate and potassium carbonate. The result was a quantity of sulfuric acid, double that which was contained in the seeds. This experiment demonstrated that either sulfur is not a simple element or that the source which produced the sulfur has remained unknown despite all care which has been taken to discover it. Right, and when we look at the curve round equations, we will see that sulfur is made from a combination of things, combinations of other elements. So let's take a look at that, what that actually is. So it says all transportations proposed by Kervran had two traits in common. The initial and final nuclei differ, nuclei differ by the addition or subtraction of a piece of matter. I have, for example, a proton, an alpha particle like a helium nucleus, a nucleus of oxygen or one of its isotopes, or perhaps some other familiar nuclei. And two, there is an energy excess or deficit in the order of 0 0.01 atomic mass units, or 20 electron masses. The mass equivalent of this energy gap is, of course, needed in order to have the uh, Lavoisier principle safe. The energy gap is very much larger than those occurring in chemical reactions. For example, if hens are indeed transmutating potassium into calcium, which is an exoenergetic reaction, the power they are, ra are radiating is so huge that it would if in the luminous electromagnetic form, set everything on fire all around. Right. Yeah, there's either energy out or energy in, depending on in which direction this transaction is going. So the sulfur, for example, sulfur has atomic weight of 32. Oxygen has atomic weight of 16. Take two oxygens, 16 and 16, put it together, there's your sulfur. Now the interesting bit is the calcium because that goes back to the bones. When we want to build healthy human bones, we can do that either through the magnesium path or through the silicon path. So Si, silicon, number 28, plus carbon, number 12, equals 40, which is the weight of calcium. So combine silicon, carbon, put them together, there's your calcium. The other pathway there is magnesium, and oxygen. Magnesium is 24, oxygen is 16, add those two together, there's your 40. Magnesium, oxygen, there's calcium. The funny thing, horses, race horses, when they run, when they have the high output of oxygen that they need for this high output of energy, they are actually dissolving their bones stealing the oxygen for oxygenation, for energy production, and leaving magnesium in their circulation, in their blood, in their fluids. And then when the race is over and they're put out to calm down and do whatever, they uh, breathe the oxygen out of the atmosphere, they reconnect the magnesium that they have produced with the oxygen and put it back in the storage as calcium in their bones. And the other pathway that you talked about is the potassium. Potassium is 39, so hydrogen is 1. So add one potassium to one hydrogen, and there's your calcium again. So it is highly possible that our bones are store for energy, or store for oxygen, or store for whatever element we may need. The other thing that kind of comes to mind as I'm listening to this is if we need calcium in our bones and we're low in calcium, uh, drinking milk, which they say is high in calcium, might not be the right answer. That's correct. The right answer might be drink some silica collagen booster. Because we, we're making the assumption that because it's calcium, and when it goes in our mouth, it'll, the stomach will take it and turn it into calcium for our bones. And uh, that may be two separate types of calcium. It may be not the way the calcium is created that goes into our bones. It may be it's created from two other elements, silica being one of them. Yes. You just remind me of something. There are seven different 
isotopes of calcium, a different isotope of calcium for the bone in your body, for the dentin in the teeth, for the uh, uh, hard part of the teeth. Each one of these is actually made from a different isotope of calcium. By isotope, we mean different number of neutrons in the, in the atom. The number of protons dictates which element it is, but the number of neutrons dictates which subset or subspecies of that atom it is. This gets complicated. And life, life is infinitely more complicated than the simplicit, simplistic proclamations from the marketers. And here we are, marketers, trying to confuse people with complexities, huh? Wouldn't that be nice if I could just tell you, hey, if you want you have to have healthier bones, ingest silica. Because that silica is, or silicon, in a carbon organic compound. Because that way, you're going to be building more of the connective tissue, the collagen, which means that you will have healthier hair, skin, nails, bones, cartilage in the joints. Now, that's a big deal. If you have arthritis in the joints, if you have brittle fingernails, if your hair is not thick, if your skin is droopy, if when you walk you can feel your joints moving around, then you need silica. And if your um, doctor tells you that the x-rays show that your discs are collapsing or that the vertebrae are losing their mass and volume, which is very common for older people. You know how people tend to lose their height the older they get. What that means is they are actually losing the integrity of these uh, bone and disc structures. So I would say that it's imperative that to keep healthy function, the physical part of our body healthy, healthily functioning, we need to resupply and replenish the silicon in an organic compound, not as beach sand. Right. So, Martin, if someone wanted to know more and they wanted to maybe get the silica to try it out, uh, what should they do? Uh, let's have you come to Life Enthusiast, www.life-enthusiast.com. And if you want some direct answers, call me at 866-543-3388. Thank you, Martin, for sharing this amazing information. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate you. And you've been watching or listening to the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.